Hey everybody, today we are checking out the Chinese only, that's right, the Chinese only IQ player. It is an N64 unit, an official N64 unit in a controller. So welcome to Hard for Games. My name is Tony. And I'm Bill. Bill is my longtime friend. Uh, it's been a while since you've been in an episode. Yeah. Wanted to bring you back. You and I used to play N64 and watch Dragon Ball Z. And that's basically what we did. Good times. It good was a good time. So honestly, I kind of wanted to just get your reaction to this and also just kind of bring you in kind of as, a, as like a quote outsider, just to see what your thoughts would be. Right, and that's what I'm here for. I'm excited to try out this new thing. I had never heard of it, obviously, mm -hmm. until Tony had uh, approached me. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll go for it in 64 all the way. So, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bill also that. brought a lot of really interesting beer today, so we're a couple deep, so. Uh... <laughs> that's some rare beer. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so here it is. It's actually an N64 in a controller, but it's loaded with downloadable games and time-limited demos. It's kind of... Weird looking. I mean, what are your initial impressions when you see this thing? That is just a bad N64 third party controller or something. Like, like a Mad that. Cats? Like or a something. Mad <laughs> Cats, you know, like the, the, the controller you gave your like, little brother to play. Yeah, exactly. Here you go. Yeah, you know, here you go. This Good one luck. cost $10. Yeah. <laughs> go <laughs> for poorly it. Poorly done, yeah. No, yeah. that's what it looks like. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's go ahead and explore this thing a little bit. I mean, obviously, you know, we have the all the buttons you would see on a normal N64 controller, albeit a, a little bit uh, different. You have a, a power button right here. The start is a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Your D-pad is a little bit different as well. And you normally wouldn't use the D-pad on this N64 controller too yeah. much. I mean, there weren't too many games that utilized it. Um, and of course, your, your analog joystick. You know, on the back here, you have your LR and your Z. Now, because you remember the Z trigger oh, yeah. was trigger like, bit, you know, yeah. pulling the trigger of a, like a gun, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit different. I mean, still on the back, but it, it's not... In the same spot. It's not the same um, ergonomic, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, you have your proprietary AV out. You have a USB out. And you also have your memory pack. Now, this memory pack is where the games were stored. So to get new games, you'd either go to a like kiosk and download them onto the memory pack, or you would use some at-home software, connect via USB and just download them at home. Directly, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which seemed like the easier option. Now, originally I was thinking like, why would you ever go out of your way to download games like at a store? But when we were talking earlier, you brought up a good point regarding uh, internet access in China. It's very possible that the rural areas just didn't have it or not, it wasn't very good. I mean, even around here, you get into the sticks and it's not easy. Think about yeah. China, especially in 2003 or mm -hmm. early 2000s. And you know, if you got outside the city, it was probably really hard to get access to the internet. So the kiosks were the next best thing. Interesting thing about the website though, is that, uh, you know, this thing was released in 2003. Mm -hmm. Guess when they stopped the website where you could download games. Oh, N64 probably became irrelevant, I don't know, late 2000s. Like, yeah. maybe, so I mean, maybe the, the later part of 2009 in, or something. I don't know, somewhere around there, right? In the U.S., I mean, think about it, like, the N64 was getting old around the year 2000. This was released in 2003, so it was oh, already yeah. old. That's true. But, yeah, I mean, I would guess maybe, like, five years, maybe yeah. maybe a little bit more, ten years at most, right? Yeah, five years, that'd be my guess, if I had to take one, yeah. 2016, they shut down... The website. 2016. 2016. They supported this thing for over oh a gosh. decade in China. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, up until about a year ago, a little over so, a year ago, you could still, in China, download games for your IQ player. And then, of course, you also have your uh, sort of proprietary AV out here. A couple notes about that. It is interesting because this thing is... Oh, geez. Is uh, both audio and video, but your power is connected to it as well. Which originally I thought was weird. I'd never really seen, I mean, I'm sure they exist. Obviously they exist, mm -hmm. but I'd never really seen anything like this. But it's good because when you connect in, you don't have AV and then like power. Oh, like a, okay, yeah. So, so it's like, like a separate. Yeah, you know. so it's not like, you know, let's say your uh, TV's over here and your power is over there. You're kind of like stuck at like a right angle. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, so it's this thing, it's like, all right, you have this length 
and then you split off between audio, video, and power. So at first I thought it was strange, but I it actually yeah. kind of like it. And unfortunately, this thing only has composite out. So the original N64 was unique in that it could do composite and as a video, but unlike the Super Nintendo, could not do RGB. True. So the video files out there uh, tend to have issues with the N64 because you can't really maximize the quality out of it. I actually have an RGB modded N64, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I, I went that far. Yeah, he's like, oh my god, Tony. Uh, <laughs> wow, that is um, something else. And there have been some people that have actually modded these things to have S-Video out. Oh, wow. Which is a little bit of an upgrade from composite. Um, they were really concerned about those uh, 2003 graphics. Yeah, right? exactly. They wanted it as crisp as possible. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that said that this isn't um, modded for S video out, so we're just going to be kind of seeing it in plain old composite. <laughs> so I'm sure you're wondering, okay, why didn't they just release the N64 in China? Well, they have some interesting laws. Um, in, in general, they have some interesting laws. They had a ban on video game consoles. So basically, they were like, okay, well, this isn't a console. <laughs> That's how you get around. Yeah, exactly. So they actually partnered with an individual named uh, Wei Yen. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that somewhat correct. So. And together they were able to produce the IQ player. There was also a rampant uh, issue with piracy. It still is in China. People just download ROMs or ISOs or whatever. And I mean, there's so many bootleg stuff in China, oh God, right? Yeah. Hey, Rolex for $10. Yeah, exactly. So by having these memory packs, which can only connect to specific units, they thought they could kind of get around that a little bit. So basically they were able to produce these IQ players and still have it be official hardware, but also kind of have it not be a console, right? <laughs> Interestingly enough, if you go to IQ site, they're selling 3DSs. Wow. Really? But they're not Nintendo 3DSs, they're IQ 3DSs. <laughs> so like the IQ brand is still like going brand along. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's still chugging along just fine. So before we actually get into booting this thing, playing some of the games, mm -hmm. I wanted to get into sort of a tactile comparison. I have my opinion about how it feels compared to a normal N64 controller, but I kind of wanted to see what your opinion was. So obviously if I had a lot of time with this, I know it's very well. Oh yeah, you're um, he's an old friend. Now this is great, this feels awesome. You know, I tried to, you know, do emulators on my computer at home, but I use an Xbox controller, yeah. not the same. Not no. the same. So, yeah. how, how does, like, the C buttons, how, do the jo how does the joystick feel? How does the D-pad feel comparatively? The joystick definitely feels a little bit... It's off, but I can't... Like, this one feels like it wants to snap back more. Yeah, it's a little like, bit tighter. One, this one's tighter, the IQ player yeah. is a little bit tighter. Maybe that's what I'm feeling. Because, yeah, there is definitely something. Otherwise, it's not too bad. Um, I feel like there's a lot of range in here, though. Whereas this one has about the same range, but it's a little bit easier, maybe, you know, to get from one, like, edge to the other or whatever. This but one's giving here, you more resistance. Yeah, it's giving me more resistance. I almost, almost feel like I have to, like, go farther. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I wanted to go from up to down like that... Yeah, this, I don't know why. It just feels easier on that than this. You know, that it might be because your, your thumb's so much higher. You know, so your thumb's, like, right here. Oh, that's true. With this. Yeah, that's Whereas your point. thumb's like almost reaching slightly with the IQ player. But it, it still just feels that way. These ones, when you click the C buttons and the other buttons on the N64 controller, listen. Like they almost sound plasticky where these sound like a little bit thicker. Oh, wow. You're I don't right. know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there's definitely sort of a different uh, feel and sound. Like, they, that almost feels a little bit more solid. IQ. I kind of like that. That's kind of neat, the, the whole IQ thing. Yeah. Notice how every time we boot it, we get a slightly different piece of art. And oh, although these look very familiar, I feel like... I feel like these might be unique images to this. I mean, obviously Nintendo probably had these images and like slapped them on, but um, they're not images that we see. They're not images that we saw often as Americans, I guess, like integrated into the game, I guess you could say. So if you take a look at this here, we, we see a lot. Okay, so uh, we see <laughs> a number of games. We have Dr. Mario, Mario 64, Star Fox, Ocarina of Time. I think this is Wave Race. 
um, etc. Right, Mario Kart. So, but if we take a look on the side here, we see a couple different icons and a couple different colors, right? So, red icon means that we own this game. It is on the memory card. We've paid for it. We can play the whole thing. Oh, interesting. I'm pretty sure these all come with Dr. Mario. Uh, but looks like this individual who owned it previously also bought Mario 64. Now, a yellow square means it's a demo. And it's a time-limited demo. Meaning that once you play a certain amount of time, it's done. You cannot access it anymore whatsoever, period, the end, goodbye. Uh, so all of these have these demos, but look at all these time-limited demos here. Basically, it's like you don't want to really touch them. We're going to touch them, but we're not going to play too <laughs> much of them because uh, we don't want to just, like, erase them, Yeah. basically. Yeah. So obviously you have this memory card on the right-hand side here. So that means it's on the memory card. Now you have a couple here that have the yellow square and the computer. Now the explanation, the explanation that I heard for this was that you bought this game and now maybe you've shuffled around some files to make room. Uh, so it's not on the memory card, but you could download it, hence the computer. Interesting. But I, my theory is a little bit different. My theory is that these were demos, hence the yellow square, and you've played them. So you need to go buy them now. Oh, maybe. That's very possible. I haven't had a, a clear explanation of it. Uh, again, I, I hear different things, but I, I just don't, I don't know why these would be yellow square if you own them. So let's go ahead and get into some games here. You're going to notice that all of them have been <coughs> translated into Chinese, uh, but some of them actually have Chinese voice acting as well, but some don't. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Mario 64. You have a little loading screen here. So you notice that the voice acting is still English in this particular one. But look at the background, IQ. Yeah, and yeah. Kind of so like every, everything is yeah. like they actually went back in and not only changed the language, but adjusted the sort of, I guess, texture in the background there. So we tried capturing this a couple of different ways. Uh, upscaling it to HD first, just capturing it via composite. But regardless of what we did, we got this weird horizontal line during gameplay. So for whatever reason, we just couldn't get rid of it. I'm not sure why this exists. I've captured hundreds of games via composite and have never had this issue. I'm not sure if it has something to do with the IQ player and some sort of unique signal that's going to my Elgato. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that the power and the AV are like run through the same line for a while and that's causing some interference. I don't really know, but something's going on to give us a less than ideal uh, signal. So again, I do apologize for that weird horizontal line. We're just gonna have to deal with it together. So there are actually a couple of differences between these games and the versions that we're familiar with, aside from the language. So first off, there's no rumble support because there's no room for a rumble pack in this thing. Oh, well, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. So the original version of Mario didn't have rumble support, although in the U.S. they did release a version that did eventually. So I think, you know, for example, in Ocarina of Time, there was an item that would allow the rumble pack to rumble when there was a secret around. So obviously that couldn't be the same with the IQ player's version of Ocarina of Time because there was no rumble pack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That makes sense. I guess my first impression so far is... One, I haven't played this game in a while, but two, uh, yeah. it's definitely different because of the layout of the buttons, and um, I don't know. I don't know if I like it, you know? It's just it's it's just too different from what I'm used to playing with really? the 64, okay. obviously. Um, so that's my initial thing. Other than that, obviously, we, we didn't touch on it too much was that the Z button is now right here yeah. instead of back here. So that's kind of different, too, and I, I feel like that kind of throws me off in the same way. Um, so I'm just trying to get used to the new layout. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, having played a little bit earlier today, I'm more used to it. So for me, the controller isn't as much of an issue. Like, I, I'm pretty used to it. But, like, if you're going from only the memory of the exact layout of the N64 controller, I could see how this would be kind of uh, mm -hmm. an adjustment. That's the, yeah. My muscle memory is going to go back to that. Yeah. Um, but like you said, you'll, you get used to it just like you used to yeah. anything. Is how, in this case, do they do multiple players? 
So, that is a good question. There actually was an adapter to allow you to do multiplayer. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so you weren't stuck with just single player. So we talked about the rumble support or lack thereof, but there are more differences. In many of these games, they actually have faster loading time and reduced lag, which makes the Ocarina of Time and Star Fox version found in this unit more popular with speedrunners. That would make sense. Because they can burn off like several minutes to their time. Yeah. And, and it's still huge. technically official. I mean, like, oh, let me just play the Chinese version. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a cheat, almost in a way. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's how they get around a lot of stuff when they uh, do the speed runs. They try to do different versions. They try to do uh, different techniques. Glitches, like glitches, that kind of stuff. Whatever. Yeah, whatever you can do to like slim down that time. Now, obviously, different speed runs have different uh, requirements. Yeah, and rules you know, and everything. Rules, yeah, so. exactly. So, obviously, you wouldn't be like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm going to do a speed run of the Chinese version versus the American version. But if you're doing the IQ version your number does look nicer. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, if you have reduced lag, you know, quicker loading time, you could just burn through it quicker. You know, mm -hmm. looks good. No, looks, looks good, good on paper. <laughs> looks good on paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the demo of Star Fox. Now, does this one have the Chinese voice acting? It does. It does actually mm, have the Chinese voice acting. So they really did go in and modify this for the Chinese market. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Oh my god, that's hilarious! So regardless if you're you know playing the European, the American, the Chinese version, Slippy's still a little bitch. I know. I was just about to say that she still he still sounds like a little girl, a little bitch. I've actually never played Dr. Mario either. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> oh, you, this one used the D-pad in. Oh shoot, that took me a minute to figure out. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Yeah, it's just like oh, Atari. Sh shoot. This is like the hardest setting, Tony. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, then I, we, I think we... this is not the game for us, Bill. And I think... <laughs> so ultimately, what was your thought on the IQ player? I didn't mind it. Obviously, it's not my cup of tea, but that's because I'm really set on the old N64 controller, the layout, the sure. ergonomic placement, everything. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, the Chinese guys, they never got to experience that. This is their retro. This is their mm. muscle memory, their original nostalgic feel. So they would never know their difference. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then that's who it was made for in the first place. So obviously I've gotten used to it over playing the games today um, to, to a point. But it's still just not that feel I, I would like if I was going to play an N64 game. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So. Yeah. Personally, I do think that this feels pretty good and solid in my hands, but I do understand what you're saying regarding the button placement and kind of just like where your hands naturally flow. Um, I do think that this is definitely a niche product. This is definitely for the <clears throat> N64 aficionado, N64 collector. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's all it is now, at least. Yeah. Speaking of which, if you are planning on getting one, make sure that you contact the seller, whether it's on eBay or whatever. Um, selling auction site or whatever, however you're getting one, make sure to contact the seller to see what games are on the memory pack. Because you don't want to be surprised and learn that it's just Dr. Mario and our, all demos, basically. Yeah, and I'm surprised you can't still go find those games and put them on this thing. I guess that's not a thing. So, uh, I know I know the site's down, of, but you know a lot of times, even if the site's down, there's always people that have them out there. Yeah, so there is actually a community that's been dumping these games. Okay. So yeah. that, that that is niche as hell. And that's coming from a guy who dumps N64 disk drive stuff. <laughs> like, this is niche as hell, these people that are dumping this. Um, I mean, it, you can seek out those people, but I would recommend basically to just start off with just contacting the seller, see what games are actually on the system. On the system. And, right. and, and go from there. I mean, there are definitely limitations, like the composite only and the, the demos running out of time and that kind of stuff, which kind of sucks. Um, but it's just kind of a neat novelty. In, that, in, at in this my point. mind, yeah. yeah. Uh, so before we go here, a big, big thank you to both Nerdtopia in Fraser, Michigan, and Retrotaku Video Games in Madison Heights, Michigan. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Absolutely. owner of both of these locations, both of these video game stores, let us borrow this and check this out today. It is very much appreciated. Both of those retro game stores are my favorite locations to get games. I'm not just saying that because I let us borrow it. They are legitimately my favorite places to get video games. Yeah, they are hardcore yeah. retro game stores. 
Good stuff. So if you're in the area, you know where to go. Make sure to check it out if you're in Metro Detroit. I might have to go there and get some uh, original N64 games. Yeah, they have a freaking ton. So. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've been playing them. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah, now that you got the itch again. again. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking about our relationship in high school. And, uh, you know, we played a lot of N64. And you really introduced me to Dragon Ball Z, right? And the N64 really stuck. But the Dragon Ball Z... And eh, kind of not so much, but I was thinking to myself, if I wanted to watch an endless fight, I would have just stayed with my ex-wife. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And, Joke, that right? was so see, good, Tony. See, I told you my jokes would get better. They would. They would get better. That's they would what get better beer with a little, does little to you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time. 